So I have a page on suggest.gg. You can find at cir.re slash suggest. And it's basically just up there for you to make suggestions on what you actually want to see me make videos on. And I do listen to them. I do look at them. And one of the most highly requested videos, as you can see here, is my Laravel toolkit. So here is everything that I generally use when I'm building out Laravel application and after successfully building multiple products that have users, here's what I use for most of those projects. Now, just a note that this isn't a sponsored video by any means. A lot of these tools I do pay to use. They are paid tools, but some of them are tools that just work great for me and work best for what I'm doing. And so some of these are free, some of them are paid, but I really appreciate every single person, every single author, every single creator who has made these tools that I am using right now. Again, this is kind of my own opinion on what makes a great Laravel application. Most Laravel applications, you're not even going to need to install anything. It just comes out of the box. Laravel also has a fantastic ecosystem, a fantastic community, and here's some pieces that you might find fit great for you and your workflow when building a new Laravel product, Laravel application. Whenever I'm building a new application, I always start with a starter kit and specifically Breeze probably 80 to 90% of the time with Livewire, more specifically, I should say, Livewire Volt, which is the single file components. I have a bunch of videos on those. Any video that I do for demo purposes is usually Livewire Volt. And I use the class-based API the majority of the time. If I'm not using Breeze or I need something specific within a starter kit, most of the time I'm gonna be using Laravel Jetstream. Really the only time I would choose this over Breeze within the live Livewire specific section of Jetstream is if I'm looking for team support or maybe like API or multi-factor authentication kind of out of the box just to move quickly. But those are pretty easily to add within Laravel Breeze. And most of the time I just start with Breeze. Another option that I love is Genesis by Dev jo Dojo or Tony Leah. It's a fantastic looking starter kit and is using full Volt and Folio. I actually did a PR for the class-based Volt components within Genesis. And it's just a great way to get up and running, has a blog, has some other awesome features. It's like Laravel Breeze, but with Folio. That's a great way of putting it. And the components themselves are insanely beautiful. It reminds me a lot of Shad CN UI within the JavaScript world. Now moving to more of like a startup kind of tool. And this is Bento. I love Bento. The creator who is on Twitter, Jesse, is fan phenomenal. And Bento is just basically email marketing with flows. I mean, there's a whole lot more to that. I use it for even for my customer support type stuff as well, just because it has almost everything out of the box. It's just a fantastic tool, especially for the price. But I have it hooked up into my Laravel applications where if a new user is created, I add them to my Bento list and then they just go through like this drip campaign type of flow where I'm not sending emails automatically or having to do all that logic myself. I just did it one time in Bento and it just continues to work. I love it. Next, Filament. It's not just an admin panel, although that's probably one of the most famous parts of Filament. It's everything from panels for your users to maybe like s panels for your admins and even forms and tables, notifications. I actually built a full SaaS website, SecureQuest, off of Filament. If I was to take a look at my dashboard here, this is actually all Filament. It's just custom Filament pages that I built, and this is actually Filament V2, so that's why it's not as fancy or not as beautiful looking. It's not a just an admin panel, and it's literally the ability to have these custom form components without touching any markup. You kind of just say, hey, here's all of the form fields that I want, now render me a form, and you just do it all within Livewire and PHP files. Laravel Spark. Now, this is what I would use for pretty much every single product that I am wanting to have paid users for. It is a paid product. I believe it's $200. I pay the unlimited projects just because I have at least four different projects who are, that are using Laravel Spark, but it basically just gives you a billing solution out of the box where I can just point my users to slash billing. 
I don't have to manage the styles or anything like that. And then my users, now I can just check within Laravel Blade or Livewire, are they a paid user? Are they on a trial? It just gives me so much flexibility out of the box and I love using it. So you just connect it to Stripe, point it to some products that you might have created already in Stripe, and then you can just have your users just go to that billing. It creates invoices for you. It does all the webhook stuff for you. Uh, it saved me a ton of time and a ton of money. Laravel Actions. This is a different one that I admittedly don't use as much as I want to, but it's phenomenal. I think it's perfect within any live wire components as well. It's basically saying, okay, instead of creating your typical MVC, like resource controller with your actions of store, delete, you know, destroy all that. This is basically just saying, okay, what task do you need? And then create an action for that task. It's basically like a single action controller just on steroids. It's basically gives you the flexibility of saying, okay, what do you want your application to do? And then you just extract that logic into one simple action. So if we wanted to create a new article, for example, instead of having this whole uh, class happen in every single component, and for my case, I would probably be using Livewire Volt, instead of having all of this logic in every single Livewire Volt component, after I do it one or two times, it's basically extracting it out in its own separate class, its own separate action, Every single live wire volt component can now call this create new article class. So create a new article run, for example. Okay, what's the next? Tailwind UI. Now, if you probably don't haven't heard of this, it's I don't know where you're living, probably under a rock, but Tailwind UI is phenomenal. I basically use it for any any time I want inspiration for how I should be scaffolding things out. Or if I just want something quick and I'm like, okay, I, I need a card or I need a table. It's just perfect. Most of the time, I'm not even reaching for the, the view or react side of things. I'm just taking HTML. And if I need to throw an Alpine for you know hiding the things or the mobile versus desktop version of it, that's usually what I'm reaching for. It's just adding a little bit of Alpine in my Tailwind UI classes. Okay, next, Sentry. Sentry has a phenomenal free tier. That's, that's pretty much why I love it. And, but I, I think it works fantastic with Laravel because it's so easy to get up and running. And even Laravel Forge and Laravel Vapor just released a integration specifically with Sentry as a partner of saying, hey, now it's just one click to get your Sentry, uh, Sentry kind of set up for every single project that you deploy. I have it hooked up into my Slack so that I just get notifications if there's a slow running query or if a user hit a specific endpoint that isn't running properly or isn't working properly or even front end errors on my page, it still gives me those as well. But it's phenomenal for both sides of the coin, for both front end and back end. Speaking about debugging, one of my favorite tools is Ray. This is a paid tool, but I absolutely love it. So whenever I'm creating projects and working with them locally i'm using ray think of this if you're from the javascript world think of this as like console.log on steroids and my favorite part about it is i don't have to worry about removing any of this so if you're from the php world you're probably like dd dying dumping all over the place now i just call ray and it basically just gives it to you in this beautiful kind of window and you get all the things you're kind of logging out but I don't have to remove all of this when I'm actually wanting to deploy it because it doesn't break. If you were to do a find and replace in all of my projects for Ray, you would probably see a lot of those commands because that's how I kind of work and how I how I build. I'm like, okay, what is actually the array that's returning here? Or what's the string that's returning here? And that's just my flow now. And I love it. Now, this is moving into the, the component aspect of things. Anytime I'm reaching for live wire components, if it's not built into the starter kit, like within Breeze or Genesis, most of my flow has been with Wire UI. There's a couple other ones I've been testing and using, but Wire UI was, is the one that I have kind of just constantly returned to. So it has beautiful like error handling and everything like that, but each button I can just say loading equals 
and it will automatically have a loading spinner depending on a live wire action that I want to attach to that specific button. In my uh, three and a half hour long tall stack course, we actually use wire UI because I think it's one of the best ways for me at least just to get up and running. It's all tailwind, so it's extremely themable or just flexible if I wanted to modify any of those. But usually I will I would start with this with any of my projects. Next, Laravel Debug Bar. This is probably one of the most recommended packages across all of the Laravel ecosystem because it's a debug bar specifically for your local environment that just gives you more than you might want for what's actually happening in development. For example, I use this mostly for to say how long has a specific query run or maybe if I'm not eager loading a specific query while I'm in development. It's basically one of the first things that I would install after doing a Laravel new application. Next is Slack alerts. This one is still I use for most of my applications, not every single one, but a lot of the times I like to just be alerted of things in my Slack if I get a new user or if someone upgrades to an account. I use this instead of having to set up like a bunch of webhooks within Stripe or having to set up all of this by hand. I basically just pinpoint it for every single action that I might want. Mostly like new users, new payment, that kind of thing. But it just makes it incredibly easy. You just set up a bot in your Slack account set up the specific webhook that Slack gives you, and then you can just call Slack alert and then the message that you have. Okay, for analytics, I use Persh. There, there's a bunch of different phenomenal analytics packages. I love Persh and I've been using it for a couple of years now. They also have a Laravel specific package where you can just track page views from your middleware. Now here's a little bit more of a kind of case by case basis, but I use the open AI, a, uh, open AI PHP package specifically for Laravel. This just makes it easier to do any open AI calls without having to do basically anything on your end. As long as you have your open AI key organization, you can see how clean this looks. Open AI chat creates and then you pass in the model and the messages. I use this for anything that I'm using AI with just because it just makes it easy. I believe it was created or, or maintained by Nuno from the Laravel team. Another component package, Wire Elements Pro. There's a bunch of different pro components that kind of come out of the box with this, but some of my favorite is the modal and kind of slide over. There's a spotlight component that I haven't gotten to to build into yet, but it's some of those things where I knew that I needed a specific slide over component and this just worked out of the box. It's built by Philo, who also built Wirebox, which is a phenomenal kind of like live wire playground. So I would check that out as well. Next, Laravel comments. This is just a great package. If you are trying to build comments in your application, I have a couple of different projects using this, but it just works. <laughs> I, it was so easy to install. I think it took 10 minutes for me to install. It's basically comments with emoji reactions, everything like that out of the box. And it's all live wire. I believe, yeah, just drop in live wire component and in a single application, $49. The time that you would save doing all this includes notifications and markdown and code highlighting. It's well worth the money. I love it. Okay, Saloon. This is for specifically if you're building API integrations for your product. Now, I wish I could use this more. I haven't used it as much just because I only have one product where I have a, a couple different API application integrations kind of built in. It's basically just the ability to have all of those API integrations under one SDK. If you're connecting to uh, forge or if you're connecting to a, a different kind of package and you're wanting to simplify and also bring all of those API connections under one SDK, kind of one look, one feel so that your code is cleaner and easier to test. This is the package for you. Admittedly, I haven't been able to dive into it as much as I want just because the, the simplicity of getting it up and running was enough for what I needed for the couple of integrations that I need to set up with. This is another one that's kind of a case by case basis, but if you are looking to use multi-tenancy within Laravel, this is the package that I used for my project. And it just happened easy. I was basically doing a single database multi-tenancy where I needed subdomains for each user. And 
This took me maybe 30 or so minutes to start getting up out of the box. Okay, Laravel Excel. If you've ever had to work with an Excel document within any project, even Laravel, it's an extremely difficult, but this makes it incredibly easy. So if I want to like import an Excel file from my user, this just basically allows me to do that without having to touch anything. The great part is it has an incredible export as well. So if I want to, you know, export, for example, I have a, a records in a database. If I want to export them as a specific Excel file and even like change up what the headers of that table look like or give it specific styles, you can do that all within this package. So if you're working with Excel, this is a phenomenal package to get up and running. Sushi. This is another one that I wish I used more, but I haven't had the need to just do it just yet other than my demo projects. This is basically saying if you wanted to have your one of your model have specific rows in that model that you can then use Eloquent to query, for example, in this state model, if you wanted to call Eloquent just like you would with a database model, but not actually have these rows be in the database, that's what Sushi is for. I know a couple of people use this within their production applications for things like for things like settings or maybe even like country flags or stuff like that, where you don't necessarily need to store that in the database or maybe it needs to be a little bit more flexible to, to update and that kind of thing. Built by Caleb Porzio, of course, and a beautiful website. Okay, if I'm deploying my application right now, most of the time I'm deploying with Laravel Vapor. It sets up to AWS, and it is, at least now, one of the easiest ways, I think, to deploy a Laravel application with everything built in. So email with SES, you have queues with SQS out of the box, you even have caching if you need that out of the box with Redis. It just, anything you need, it just sets it up for you. So it was one of the first things that I purchased from the Laravel team. It is a little bit pricey. I believe it's $400 a year, but that's for all deployments and they don't mark up any kind of um, AWS pricing. So you just pay for AWS and then this just handles all the connections and configuration and setup for you. You just deploy to production. If I'm not deploying on Vapor, maybe like for a smaller project, I'm usually deploying on fly to IO. Again, I think this is incredibly easy and probably another easier one for now. Most of my newer projects are actually using Terso with SQLite on Vapor because, so you can't, you have SQLite in AWS because it's it's AWS, um, unless you're actually uh, like Aaron, Aaron Francis and you're kind of breaking it and then restoring it every single time. I, I just set up Terso and there's a specific Terso Laravel package by Rashawn Fungdison. And it just works out of the box for me. I have my newer projects deployed to Laravel Vapor. And then my database is just hosted on Terso. Terso's free tier is phenomenal. And I think that Terso is actually working on uh, a, a specific Terso Laravel package. Uh, I don't know if they're bringing this one in or maybe like a new one for themselves, but keep an eye out for that as well. And this is just kind of a very you know, informal video of he here's the packages, the the products, the, the both paid and free, and just little tools that I like to use for the majority of my products and applications I build, whether that's demo products or actually products serving users. Uh, let me know if you have any other requests or suggestions for videos. That's cir.re/suggest. But keep creating. See you soon.